Well, I think it's complicated. Uh, and, and so, so um, I don't need to just empathize. I can sympathize because I've been in those shoes. Uh, I've worked in, in five learning and development departments and I've run three of them. So I do understand that, that part of it is expectation, that everybody thinks they know what learning and development does, and that is deliver training and provide content. Um, what I don't think is really explored, and I don't think learning and development really help themselves with this, is outcome focus. So we all kind of believe a little bit of nonsense, which means if I attend this program, for which the facilitator doesn't understand my job, there's no content that actually refers to any of the tasks that, that I face or any of the, the cultural aspects of working inside this organization or very little. But it's believed that if I attend or I consume, therefore I can perform. And it's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. The only way that you can more predictably and reliably affect performance is by understanding what it is that people are trying to do and what they're not able to do easily or effectively in the context of their organization, the department, the team, and even the role. And this is where if you're data and evidence based and you're only working on things that are critical to the organization, then you can move fast and fix things. But if what you're doing is you are just providing content and programs around broad themes that may or may not make a significant difference to the individual, their team and their stakeholders, it's pretty low stakes. It doesn't really matter. So if you've got somebody who turns up for, say, a presentation skills course, they're just starting to do presentations. They've not really got a critical presentation to do. So they attend and then they come back and they've got a bit of a better structure. My, think, my thinking around that, Har, is so what? So what? Really, it doesn't matter. You know, what? Um, by, by, um, the, the development will come by doing it. And let's be frank, we... We can all Google how to do a presentation these days. And the closer we get to the need, the more we're going to apply and try things. So attending something well in advance of actually doing it will actually lessen the, the, the chances of you actually remembering, let alone applying. Um, and it's all pretty low stakes anyway. That's why I say that if we're data and evidence um, based, it's not about um, having an exhaustive curriculum and people attend something in the hope that they perform. It's much more around what is a critical point of failure in our organization that if we don't address this, we will lose good people. We will lose opportunity. We'll lose money. You know, what, what, what is it? that's keeping our leaders up at night, that they're not having the conversations about developing their people and their teams so that these things can be fixed. Then understanding that from a data perspective and saying to, to that leader, instead of brilliant, what would you like in your course or went like, who would you like to attend? Uh, asking the next question, could you show me the consequences of this? So you're telling me that you're losing good people, losing opportunity or losing money. Could you show me that data so that I can see it for myself? For about 20% of the uh, of uh, those conversations, there's going to be no data because between you and me, Ha, there's no real problem. Like, the, you know, it's been it's been observed or it's been um, uh, engineered in order to fulfil a different type of need, but it's not actually a problem. But 80% of the time, you'll be able to your um, your stakeholder will be able to show you their service level agreements or their KPIs and say this is it. This is integral to the way we work and we're not doing that. And that's brilliant because then you can have conversations around the data. There's something actually broken. You can figure out who's accountable for this so that you can then get seek their experience and their evidence. And you can begin the development process before you've even created anything. I'll give you a good example of that. I was doing some work with um, a, a broadcaster in the UK uh, probably about five years ago, and they wanted to do something for middle managers. Um, but before we knew what uh, what they really needed help with, because they were quite neglected, we just got 50 of them together. So we got, the, got them all together. We talked about what was hard about their job, what they were expected to do, what they weren't able to do easily. And we spent half a day doing this. And we got loads of great stuff. We were doing uh, analysis around the core elements of their job. 
at the end of it, uh, when they were walking out, somebody stopped me, shook my hand and said, I think that was the best training course I've ever been on. Oh, that wasn't a training course. That was a discovery session. But because we were talking about what was actually important, it had already started the development process. So all we needed to do, that was discovery. Then we just needed to see what we could apply in order to make their lives easier, better, more effective to address their actions. KPIs. So you can see that with uh, uh, exploring with the people you want to influence about the KPIs that they're accountable for can kickstart the development and improvement process before anything is created. And then what you do is you keep that conversation going. And then it's a case of see if you can add a little bit here and there in order to make a significant difference. So you want to be asking them. So so you so so you've got the data, there's a real problem. You've got the group of people together who are responsible for the work. They tell you what they're trying to do and what they're not able to do and what's missing. So then you ask them, if we were going to do one thing, what should we do? What what do you need in order for you to improve your performance in that area and therefore improve the KPI? So you're do so you're making one small bet and you're giving the work to the people responsible for it. And you might provide them with a resource. You might provide them, uh, they might need another a conversation. This might be something to do with process, communication, access, a hierarchy. But if your stakeholders there, then, then that conversation is actually being had. And then you might say, right, so how long do we need to, to, to test this hypothesis. How long do we need to test that that was the thing you needed to see whether we need improvement? And I might say, oh, well, you know, we do monthly reporting. So it's okay. So how about we come back together this time next month and we talk about the progress that we've made and what else you need. And so what you do is you work in in partnership with the people responsible for the work, and then you are, and then at the end of it, it is successful when you've achieved what was deficient in the first place. That is smart learning and development. That way, we never look at ourselves wondering whether we are adding value. That way, we can show to our stakeholders that this was the difference that we made because we had these conversations, we facilitated the, um, the conversations, and then we applied or were there to suggest these solutions. And then you move on to the next one. So that is a smart way of data-driven learning and development. It is faster, easier, less risky, it's cheaper and far more effective.